Yo, yo, yo. What is going on, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love? My name is Jamal Pope, a.k.a. J. Phoenix, and this is going to be your astrology forecast for Thursday, December 7th of 2023. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day, a wonderful week so far. Let's go ahead and hop into these astrological transits for today so you can be better prepared to navigate these celestial energies and currents. It is very busy outside. We've got people blowing leaves. We've got people doing some construction on the front, on the other side of the apartment. So if y'all hear a lot of noise in the background, we've got the dog barking next door. It, it's pretty loud out there. There's a lot of stuff that's under construction outside. So it kind of almost feel like our lives are kind of like that right now, right? You kind of feel like things are under construction and things are kind of loud. And we just sort of want to like kind of clam up and just be like, maybe hide away from the noise, stuff like that. But we actually have to get out there and do stuff ourselves, right? So let's go ahead and hop right into this. Well, we do, of course, have that moon in Libra today. It's going to be making oppositions over to Chiron and is also going to be sextiling the sun today. The sun of which in Sagittarius is actually going to be in trying to Chiron throughout the day. Very positive aspect. Even though the moon is going to be opposing that Chiron here at 15 degrees, you know, and that's going to be happening, you know, a little bit more towards the, the evening, at least here on the East Coast, around 530 or so. That's when you're going to see the moon hit that 15th degree. And like I said, it's going to oppose Chiron and it's also going to make that sextile over to the sun. Like I said, I think this is a positive aspect. You know, I think here at the sun, now it's halfway through Sagittarius, um, making this nice little harmonious aspect. You know, this is a whether or not we really do believe in our own power, whether we believe in our own strength and we believe in our ability to overcome any challenges. You know, this Chiron and Aries is having a lot of people, you know, question who they really are, you know, and the actions that the actions that they take, you know, this is an interesting spot because like I said, I say Chiron is where you unlock your superpowers and being that this is Aries, this has everything to do with the self. And, you know, the sun and Sagittarius, we can be telling ourselves different stories, especially with a Mercury that's slowing down in Capricorn, the second house of Sagittarius, about our values, right? And, you know, what the things that we wish to push forward in career and with our purpose and our legacy, that stuff is slowing down. You know, it's going to retrograde back into Sagittarius. So this, this sun that's making the trend over to Chiron, which is in the fifth house, to the sun, right? So it's actually in a nice aspect to it. This is really an incredible opportunity for us to reinvigorate our creativity, reinvigorate our passion, and to take the lessons that we have learned from the wounding that we may have experienced by this Chiron, the woundings that we may have experienced in life when it came to expression, and to really take those lessons and run with it. And, you know, what do we learn from those situations? What do we learn from those losses, those L's that we might have taken in the past? What did we learn from the victories that we had, you know? And it's like, this is about appreciating every little bit, you know? I think sometimes we have a victory that's like a, I'm going to use a lot of football references because I'm a huge football guy, right? So there's some times where you win a game and you blow out your opponent like 40 to zero, right? The other games where it's like 20 to 14. Are the games where you won like seven to three, right? And it's like, it's close, it's a drag, it's a battle of attrition, but you can still come out on top. Sometimes you lose seven to three, sometimes you get blown out of the water. You know, you got to be able to take what you learned from that, look at the film of that, and then come up with another game plan. Neptune is now going forward, right? So we already finished, we just finished watching a bunch of film right? Now it's time to come up with a game plan on how we're going to implement those things that we learned from watching that film and how we're going to move forward. How are we going to step into a new light, a new world, a new reality? But we are still, like I said, at the precipice of all this really kicking off. I said we're going to give it about a couple years and we're really about to see things shift. But we're moving into these final acts, of the story, of the movie, of the narrative, 
that we as humanity have been telling ourselves for the better part of 2,000 plus years. We are finally entering in to those final acts of the story. That's why things seem very intense. That's why things seem very, very climactic. That's why it seems like a lot of things are happening at once. And we have to be able to have the discernment to, with all of this information that is around us, to still be able to hone in on what is important to us and what is important to our personal spiritual development as light workers, right? To not to be aware, I guess you would say, of the things that are happening in the world, but to not get so caught up and wrapped up in the matrix that we begin to neglect our own spiritual path, that we begin to neglect our purpose, right? So the moon and Libra, of course, it's opposing Chiron at 15 degrees, and this is the midpoint of Libra. So this is a very balancing kind of aspect where it's like we have to be able to see both sides of the equation when it comes to this. It's like, okay, yes, this thing may have hurt me in the past. Maybe, or like maybe this way of expressing myself may have come with its challenges, right? The way that I identify, right? You know, it's like, okay, I, I identified as this thing. This thing, this positive thing that happened with it, and this negative thing that happened with it. What lessons can I take from both of these ex, of these experiences, both of these, I guess you could say, reactions, whether it's from yourself or from other people? This is wanting to bring some balance here. And now we got to remember that the ruler of Libra is now is Venus, which is now in Scorpio, which is coming into its opposition with Jupiter, as well as its sextile with Mercury. Mercury at six degrees is in trine also to Jupiter. So we have a couple of trines today and we have some harmonic energy. We have a lot of six energy, right? One plus five is six, one plus five is six, two plus four is six, one plus five is six here with the sun, six here with Mercury, six here with Jupiter, two plus four is six here with Eris. There's a lot of six energy, right? A lot of six energy. So this is very Venusian. It's going to be a very Venusian-like day, right? Especially with a moon that is in the sign of Libra, which is ruled by Venus. Now, this is about whether or not we are open to receiving the lessons from these different aspects of our consciousness, okay? One plus five is six, two plus four is six. So we have the Aries consciousness. So our character, how we identify, the way that we take action, right? In many ways, the, world, the way that the world sees us, okay? Taurus with Jupiter, six, all right? What do we value and how can we expand upon that, right? The moon over here in Libra, one plus five is six, all right? How can we find that balance and feel the balance in our life when things are inherently unbalanced at times, right? Not everything's always going to be fully balanced out. You know, sometimes it's going to feel like the dark is overtaking the light and the light's overtaking the dark. There is a little bit of light in the dark. There's a little bit of dark in the light, yin yang. How can we find balance and feel peace within a world that is inherently unbalanced? right? One plus five with the sun is Sagittarius. Okay. What do we believe? You know, Sagittarius, what do we believe? What stories are we telling ourselves about the way that we receive these certain aspects of our lives? So like the inspirations and motivations, what do we believe we can receive? What, what dreams do we believe we can tap into and really feel and start to really manifest and bring forward? And then, of course, you have Mercury here in Capricorn 6. What, and this comes down to the communication. All right, can we take this to another level? Climb the mountain, you know, build a purpose, if you will. Find our purpose. This is about the communication, too. Are we developing that communication with spirit, with source? Do we know what our purpose is, right? This, mer mer this Mercury is slowing down. It's about to retrograde. 
So that's one part of the consciousness that we're sort of like, it's going to be a little bit harder to rely on. And then, of course, you have Neptune. It's still very slow, but it's finally direct. So, and this is in, like I said, the latter degrees of Pisces. So this is more of like a worldly thing. Are we, how receptive are we to the narrative, to the movie, to the story that is being fed to us by the media? And this includes the mass media, the media media, and the small media. It's not just the big dogs out there. It includes the medium content creators and people such as myself, right? You have to be willing to have the discernment to, while engaging and watching those things, to take the things that work, leave the things that don't, but still be able to develop your own opinion and still be able to navigate that through how spirit sees fit for you, right? And I think it's interesting with this day when I see a bunch of energy that pops up at six, you know, I think it's interesting how we literally get every single, we get the six, like actual six, we get that via yeah, we get that via the Jupiter and the Mercury. Then we have a 15, one plus five is six, with Chiron and the moon and the sun. And we get 24 with the two plus the four with Eris, which, yeah, this North Node and Eris are finally separating. And then you have Neptune, which has recently gone direct. So you literally get every deacon, right? You get every deacon of the Venusian six like energy, right? And when you look at it like it, it's not a, you can look at an energy like this, and some people may hear this sort of stuff, as but like especially to the uninitiated or the uninformed, they may hear something like this and like, oh my gosh, there's six 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 all over this freaking chart. And like and like, yeah, kind of. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five six seven did i count that right hold on let me start with aries one two three four five six seven yeah there's seven of them there's seven of them right <laughs> it's kind of crazy now granted the moon's not going to stay at 15 degrees all day it's going to move to 16 degrees right so it's going to move from seven to six, right? By the end of the day, where's that moon going to end up? It's going to end up coming a little bit closer to that south node, but not quite there. It won't quite get there. I would say like west coast wise, it will begin to make the quincunx over to Uranus at 20 degrees, right? So I think honestly with the daylight today, it can be a very beautiful day, but because of, I think with, there could be a lot of simulation today. There can be a lot of just taking in a lot of information today. There can be a lot of, like I said, Venus is definitely going to be playing a very strong role. And then of course, with all this energy numerolo numerology, numerologically falling on the number six which is venus we got to look at where venus is venus is in scorpio and it's getting ready to oppose jupiter right now we got to remember too venus is in its detriment right venus is in its detriment it doesn't really like to be in scorpio but i don't think this venus of scorpio is bad because at least the south node is not there. So it gets a bit of a reprieve. Yeah, it's going to push Jupiter and Uranus. But this Venus in Scorpio is actually not that bad. It's testing our commitments and relationships. It's testing our commitments in life in general. It's having us to really look at our investments and ourself and relationships and different, different money ventures, business ventures. 
it's testing a lot of those different things. And it's gonna be asking us, are we, you know, what boundaries are we willing to push? And what boundaries do we know that we can't push, right? And are we able to even receive the downloads and the messages of maybe you shouldn't go past that boundary? You know, maybe that one over there, maybe you're much more capable than you realize and you can push that one. So, and Venus is trying to sort this thing out right now. Venus of Scorpio is a bad bitch. Let's be real, right? When she's in Libra, she can, she's like all like a little bit more, you know, polished, politically correct, you know? And Scorpio though, she's a bad bitch. Venus in Libra is like the businesswoman, you know what I'm saying? You know, dressed up with like the nice suit and everything like that. Venus of Scorpio is like, that's like her, that's like her night gig where she becomes a fucking like a rapper or some type, or maybe like a rock, like a rock star or whatever like that. And she has like this whole alternate persona in Scorpio. That is raw and real. Not that she's not raw and real in Libra, but it's like raw. And it's a little bit grungy and it's a little bit dark, but it makes her feel alive. And I think that's what this Venus of Scorpio is wanting to do is that like some people don't want to feel the intensity of life, but it's through that intensity that we know that we are alive, that we are kicking and that we are here. So it's like, yeah, this is a moment where it's like we can be very inspired and motivated to do certain things. Things, yeah, can feel inherently unbalanced right now. We are receiving a lot of information and we're trying to move things forward. Planets are start are coming out of their retrogrades. I mean, yeah, Mercury is about to retrograde, but Neptune just went direct, right? You still have Uranus and Jupiter. We have Chiron, if you want to include that as an asteroid. And this Mercury retrograde is not going to be that bad. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it in another video, but this Mercury retrograde is going to be pretty chill. You know, I might make like a Mercury retrograde survival guide since so many people worry about that one in particular. Despite the fact that I don't think it's the worst one. I really don't. Especially this one coming up. This is going to be a huge blessing in disguise. So let's go ahead and hop into the cards, shall we? come out so we're gonna do that all right so let's see what we got today well, we do have the page of swords i've been a lot of the same cards have been coming up so that means that there's a lot of similar themes so we have the page of swords right he's holding that sword he's heading into the wind you can tell because of the trees behind him and he's looking ahead into something that's going to provide some resistance. Like he's running into the wind, if you will. You know what I mean? And I think there's like this, maybe there's a tendency to want to go in the other direction because then the wind is carrying us, right? But that can almost cause even more instability potentially. Whereas you're running into the wind, it's kind of brings a bit of a different energy. You know what I'm saying? You almost like you're kind of bracing for things but if then if you have the wind at your back, it could potentially make you a little bit unbalanced, right? Now, we also have the Page of Wands. So we have two pages. We have the fire and the air, right? You have two student-like energies here. And they're facing in different directions. But, you know, with this Page of Wands, he's like, what, in the desert or something like that? And, you know, he has, of course, the tunic with all the lizards on it. So that speaks to transformation. And he's like looking up per se. So we got to have the confidence to be able to move in situations that we feel like may be providing some resistance. If you're, if you are wanting to manifest something and it is too easy, it's not big enough. 
just going to be real. And it's probably not aligned with your purpose. If you're moving towards something and it's actually providing some resistance and there's some struggle and there may even be a little bit of fear there, then that's the direction that you actually want to go in. And, you know, when it comes to our minds, though, with the sword, we got to remember Mercury, like I said, is about to retrograde. It's slowing down, right? And Mercury is still out of bounds. So we ha we can't rely totally on our minds right now. We can't really rely totally on them. The best thing to do will be to, like, what is the thing that inspires you? Okay, just go ahead and commit to that and move forward. But I'm moving into something that's resistant. Oh, well, just keep going. You may not necessarily have all the answers right now. You may not necessarily know how it's going to work out, but keep going. Keep doing it. If you really want to manifest that thing and bring that thing to fruition, keep going. Because, like, the, the only thing that you can do is, like, just set your mind on it. And it's going to do all these things. It's going to go all over the place, right? It's going to wonder about this thing and that thing and that thing and this thing and try and come up with the perfect game plan. It's going to do that. It's going to do that. Move forward anyways. We got the bottom of the deck. We have the Knight of Cups in reverse. The, it's like, yeah, I guess sometimes we want to follow our feelings and stuff and act to those feelings. I like to look at the Knights as the core cards of action. And with it being in reverse with the Cups, don't necessarily want to just always act on every little feeling that you have because if you act on every little feeling that you have you're going to find yourself all over the place or trying to with that moon and libra especially maybe trying to compromise yourself just to feel better and really that's not going to really yield you much you might get like a small little dopamine hit you might get some small little wins but there's no need to compromise your integrity here you know, I think it's good to be aware of our emotions, but we can't necessarily act on every single emotion that comes up. Sometimes we have to just observe them and let them pass by. That is going to do it for your astrology forecast today. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. If you like to have a personal reading with me, beloved, you can follow the link in the description below to my website, jphoenix.com. And as always, y'all take care. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful Thursday. I'll see you guys on the next Astrology Forecast. Peace.